Hello Triglers and welcome to the channel. This beautiful scene right here and the props and everything is actually a scene I've made with a couple of friends. And there's some aspects of this that we managed to create that I figured I'd do a tutorial on because it's kind of lackluster out on the YouTubes or it's just outdated or it can be done better or in a simpler way. So as you see, today's focus is gonna be this cloud right here. And this clip right here is actually based on a previous tutorial that I watched, but I've expanded on that tutorial and I've added some new cool things as, as you see, it's static and it is moving and looking lifelike on its own. Well, the other tutorial kind of demands that you either add a spline and kind of force it to move as you see it's spasm right here. Um, so this is going to be the in-depth version, whereas I'm going to explain a lot of the things and why it is like it is. And you can find the short version as well, uh, where I just pretty much skip through all the explanation and just show you the blueprint and what you should uh, fix and remove to make it more lifelike or, well, suit to your taste. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is that we are going to create a material. I'm going to name it cloud underscore test for this tutorial right here. We're gonna open it up. And then we are going to set this to a sub surface right here, subsurface. And the reason behind that is that we want the light to shine through the object. And then of course we want to activate the tessellation. So we are going to use the PN triangles and that is because it is better for round objects and the majority of the clouds are going to be more round than anything. Uh, so now that we activated that, what we are going to do now is that we are actually going to set up the, uh, the constants. So we are going to set up the color first. So I'm going to hold down one and left click. There we go. And then I'm going to set this at 0 0.95, which means that this isn't an absolute white, but more like kind of silver-ish. Because absolute white doesn't really look natural out there when you have the light shining on it. Um, and then what we are going to do is that we are going to create another one. We're going to set that into 0.5. We're going to plug that into the opacity, which kind of explains itself. Uh, we are going to create another one and we are going to plug that into emissive color and subsurface color and we are going to set this to pretty low. And the reason behind this is that uh, I can just minimize this. When you look behind, like under a cloud, the emissive color is pretty much going to make up for the dark parts of the cloud. If you have it to zero, then all of it is just going to be pitch black which isn't really anything we want. We kind of want it to kind of fade like it's doing right now. And it's doing the same on this wonky looking cloud as well. So we, we want that result. I'm just gonna open that again. And then we want to multiply the, <clears throat> well, we want another constant and we want to set that to 10 because we want to add that to the tessellation multiplier. Just like that. And that is pretty much the basics for this. So I'm just gonna move a little bit closer so we save a little space, just like that. And from this moment on, we're going to go step by step into the nodes and I'm going to try to explain what they do and what they are good for. All right, so what we are going to do right away is that we're gonna create something for the static movement that makes it float into the place it is and whatnot. Right. I know a lot of this is going to be a little bit uh, vague, but as soon as you get the visual representation of it, it's going to be so much easier to understand. So we are going to start with creating a node that is called time. Just going to zoom in a little bit on that. Right. And then we are going to create a constant, which is holding down the one uh, key on your keyboard, left clicking. And then we are going to convert that into a parameter. We're going to call this speed right here. So this is going to control the speed of the overall animation lifelike thing you're going to create. 
gonna multiply these two nodes together just like that and then we are going to create a constant for vector you're gonna make that into a parameter and you're gonna call that a direction because whoa that is not what I wanted to do that is absolutely not what I wanted to do I want to name you direction thank you unreal and then of course we want to multiply these two with each other as well just like that and then of course i'm going to select all of this press c i'm going to call you static movement so i know what the fuck you do in the future right and the next part of this is that we want to be able to scale it and to be able to scale anything we need to know the world position just like that and then we are going to define what the position or scale of it is when it actually gets the world position so we are going to create another constant i'm gonna put that into a parameter we're gonna call you object again unreal you're not doing what i told you to do object scale just like that and then we are going to set you to one because we don't want you to be zero we, we want you to have a size I'm going to multiply you two, which is holding down the M key and left clicking, if I forgot to mention that. And then we are going to add up you two bad boys together, because bad boys for life. I'm going to drag you back, just like that. And this is the bread and butter of your kind of a node. So I'm just going to go ahead and show what the speed does and what the... Actually, we can't control the object scale yet, but I'm going to show you what the speed does. So here it is, I'm gonna jump into that one. I'm just gonna bump up speed a hell of a lot and you can see that it goes really fast. It just went supersonic right away. So I'm just gonna revert that and let it go back to normal self. And the next part is that we are going to add the noise. The noise is what pretty much breaks up your model into being as wonky as it should look. So. Without for further ado or making it too complicated, we're just going to go ahead and do so. There is a very good noise node instead of Unreal. So we're just going to add everything we've done into the position because we have the position, we've given it a scale and we can pretty much just decide the speed of it. All right. If you right click on this noise and you go to start previewing node, you can see how much noise it gives you and everywhere that it's black and white or not is going to go up or down, right? So I'm just going to go up, get out of that. And that kind of gives you a good understanding as to how much details or how deep the uh, clouds are going to be where it's a little bit more wonky. But to control that, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to add another constant. We're going to make you a parameter. We are going to call you scale. And then we are going to multiply you two bad boys together just like that. And then we're going to scale, give you a default value of 100. So what that does is that if you go to preview node for this one, you can see the result right there. And then if you go to this one instead, this is the result you get. So you get very bright white and you get pretty dark black but what happens is that because the black gets a little bit more white and color in it as well it's not as pronounced it's not as jaggy as this note right here and this is a thing we can control on the outside as well so what is the next step the next step is that we kind of want to control how much of those jaggedy edges that shoots out of it because sometimes it just shoots out really sharp edges that you can't really do anything about but unless you actually clamp it clamp is a very good node that limits whatever it is you're plugging into it so what we're going to do is that we're going to create a controller to let you clamp those values if it gets too jaggedy or if you want it to be more jaggedy for whatever reason so we're just going to go ahead and plug that into clamp and then we have to define what the min and max is now we could do it right here but i want to be able to control it from the outside so create a constant make it a parameter we're going to call you clamp boom we're going to set your default value to 200 just like that 
We're gonna add a multiply and then we're gonna do some magic right here. You, you folks with me? We're gonna put you into minus one right here inside the multiply node, just like that, all right? And the second thing is that we want to put this one right here. We want to put you into A. We want to put this one into min. All right. And then we want to drag this one straight to max. All right. Take a second to understand what I just did here because we're saving a lot of computing space right here. And then, of course, comes the fun part. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys right here. This part right here, I don't completely understand. I have a friend that is a wizard at making all of this stuff and he explained it to me once, but I couldn't understand it for the life of me. So if you do understand this part, please explain it in the comment section. But what I do understand is that if you have any type of world displacement, you need a vertex normal. Man, all right, like a goddamn donkey today. All right, because it is a world displacement. And this part right here is the part that I do not fully understand. So we're going to get a node called local position. We're going to plug that, the bottom one right here, the local position, excluding the offset. We're going to plug that into a normalize. Just like that. And then we are going to add a switch parameter, static switch parameter. We're going to call you vertex normal based. We're going to plug this into true. We're going to plug that into false. And then what we're going to do right here as well is that we're going to go into this node right here, the switch. We're going to set it into default value. Just like that. We're just going to make a little bit more space. Just like that. And then we want to multiply these two results with each other. Bada bing, bada boom. And that is literally it, ladies and gentlemen, but there is a little bit of a problem still. See, if we add this into the world displacement right there, you're going to get a result that looks like this. Which isn't really a cloud, it's, a, it's an abomination. So we have to fix this, of course, right? So if you right click on the noise and press on preview, you're going to see that it's pretty grungy. And that is why it makes those hard spikes, of course. So. Stop preview, and then we are going to bump this down way low, just like that. Um, and level right here is going to decide the level of detail. I'm just going to leave that for now. And I'm going to put this at minus 0.3. And these are the things you can play with yourself. Um, this isn't how the cloud is going to look, of course, so don't, don't be afraid of this. And there's another thing we actually want to change, but I'm going to show you the result first. So I'm going to just going to press apply. I'm going to put this into that window. And then we are going to create a sphere because I want to show you how powerful this is. Just straight in the engine, I'm just going to make you a tall boy, a long boy, just like that. And we are going to make a material instance and here comes the magic like if i apply this to this boom but the problem is that this doesn't really come alive unless we actually move it and that is a problem of course so what we're going to do is that we're going to open up the material instance and then we are going to activate all of the parameters just like that I'm just gonna change some of these values. I'm just gonna go with 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 50, and then of course I want it to move, so I'm gonna bump that up to be a real fast boy. And it won't move, of course, because we haven't set it to any type of direction. So I'm just gonna put this into like this. That means it's gonna move towards the right. I've played around with this and just figured that out by myself, so I'm not a mathematician right now. I'm just gonna save this. And you see that there's an immediate problem with the clamping, of course. It goes absolutely haywire. And you can sit and you can kind of play with the clamp values right here, or we can make it really easy for ourselves. And we're just gonna open up the original material. We're gonna go to the noise, and then we're gonna change this one right here into a fast gradient 3D texture. We're gonna press apply on that one. And then when we get back and let this compile with the shaders, of course, it's gonna look way different. Now, of course, what this means, of course, again, is that you have to go into this and we're gonna, of course, 
bump up the scale a little bit. Let's set that to 100 and see what it does. And there it is. A pretty nice cloud. Now this one of course looks a little bit more different than these bad boys right here. And that is because even if you see these type of things happening when you're close to it, as soon as you zoom out, that doesn't happen anymore. So don't be too afraid with the whole spasming thing with the clamps because you can't see that from afar. Now, if you want something more up close, then I suggest doing this, the, the uh, fast gradient one, because that doesn't really have any problems with the clamping and whatnot, and it just does its own thing. Now, of course, this still works the same when you move it. It's not equally as responsive though, but you could, if you wanted to, if you have a spline connected to it, you could just remove the speed. And uh, let's save that one. And now it's not moving, but when you connect a spline to it, it does start moving. So this could be a cool smoke effect thing you actually want to do for a gun and whatnot. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm going to post our game later on on my YouTube as well. So I, I'll hope that some of you guys will actually play it. It is a party game. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.